Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. This one is going to be about the Rise of Kyoshi novel. We finally have an excerpt, so we have some preview pages from the book thanks to uh, io9 here. So they put up this news article today that features uh, an excerpt. So um, the first bit of this is just getting across the idea of um, what we know already. And then here is a comment from uh, Mike DiMartino, of course, co-creative, co-creator, -co executive producer of Avatar and Korra, obviously. And obviously he's involved in this book in that he's given a credit on the book for this one. So what he says here is, In the Rise of Kyoshi we meet a young woman so unlike the legend she is to become that we wonder how she could possibly transform into such a remarkable figure. She's not a great earthbender. People don't even believe she's the Avatar at the start of the book. A great conceit on Yi's behalf, and one that provides the crux of the conflict for the entire novel. Entrusting another writer with the world and characters that I helped create is always fraught with anxiety for me, but when I read when I read The Rise of Kyoshi for the first time, I was immediately drawn into the story and entranced by its intriguing new characters and backstory. So, you know, that, that's pretty good praise from uh, Mike there. Uh, presenting to us, I suppose, a better idea about what the book is actually about than the description itself. Like, it's great that the description here in the first bit mentions that, oh, she lives to be 230 years old and all this sort of stuff. But the book isn't about that as far as we're aware. What it's about is younger Kyoshi not being a great earthbender. Her at the start not being in any way like the legend of Kyoshi that we know about. It's about the journey from young Kyoshi to get to that point. That's why the book is called The Rise of Kyoshi. So, um, okay, here we go. The action-packed section we're sharing is from the seventh chapter, The Iceberg. As you'll see, it features the book's first big battle with Tagaka, the Pirate Queen. So, uh, yeah, there's a there's a there's a actually a decent amount of stuff here it's gonna take a while to go through i will read it all out here just because it is the our first time seeing stuff from this book so i want to you know go in depth as we read through it so the moments seem to qu slowly stack up on each other like a tower of raw stones each event and sequence piling higher and higher with no mortar to hold them together a structure that was unstable dreadful headed toward a total and imminent collapse the sudden movement of tagaka's two escorts drew everyone's attention but the two men only grabbed the earth kingdom woman by the arms and jumped back down the slope the way they'd come Dodging the blast of fire that Rangi managed to get off, they were the distraction. Pairs of hands burst from, <laughs> from the surface of the ice, clutching at the ankles of everyone on Yoon's side. Waterbenders had been lying in wait below them the whole time. Rangi, Janzu, and Heiran were dragged under the ice like they'd fallen through the crust of a frozen lake during the spring melt. So, for context, uh, I believe... Janzu is going to be revealed later on in this kind of excerpt to be an earthbender who is traveling with Kyoshi. Uh, I believe Rangi and Heiran are actually mother and daughter. Uh, I, I can't remember which one is which. They're both firebenders. Um, Yun is apparently who everyone believes is the avatar at this point in time. He's also an earthbender. So... I don't know the context, but like Kyoshi clearly has a group of people with her at this point in time. And either she's told no one she's the Avatar and someone thinks they're the Avatar, or they've purposefully set it up this way so that this guy will act as the Avatar or what. It's not really made particularly clear. But I think it's important context to have as you read through this. Otherwise, like little moments will make no sense uh, and it will feel like almost like, wait. Does the writer not know what he's doing here? But no, it's on purpose. So, um, Kyoshi's arms uh, shot out and she managed to arrest herself chest high on the surface. Her would-be captor hadn't made her tunnel large enough. Kelsang leapt into the air, avoiding the clutches of his underground assailant with an airbender's reflexes and deployed the wings of his glider staff. So, she's also traveling with an airbender named Kelsang, who has a sky bison named Peng Peng, who we'll meet a bit later on. Uh, Tagaka, who's the pirate queen, drew her jian, which is a type of sword, and swung it down uh, on the downstroke at Yuan's neck. But the avatar didn't flinch, so the, the, this is the, the weird bit when I first read it, like, what's going on here? But Yuan 
is the Avatar as far as everyone's concerned. Just, just, just take that to be the case. But the Avatar didn't flinch. Almost too fast for Kyoshi to see, he slammed his fist into the only source of Earth near them, the stone ink slab. It shattered into fragments and reformed as a glove around his hand. He caught Tagaka's blade as it made contact with his skin. Kyoshi stamped down hard with her boot and felt a sickening crunch. Her foot uh, stuck there as a bender whose face she'd broken refroze the water, imprisoning her lower half. So she just, so she just like kicks a, a water bender who's like underground basically and right in the face and seemingly like breaks some, something. So that's pretty cool. Gives a, an idea that she is strong at this point in time, even though she's young and apparently isn't a particularly good earthbender. Um, above the ice, Kyoshi had the perfect view of the Avatar and the Pirate Queen locked together in a mortal knot. They both looked happy that the charade was over. Uh, a trickle of Yoon's blood dripped off the edge of the blade. Uh, another thing you should know, uh, Tagaka said as she traded grins with Yun, their muscles trembling with exertion, I'm not really the waterbender my father was. Um, with her free hand, she made a series of motions so fluid and complex that Kyoshi thought her fingers had telescoped to twice their length. A series of ear-splitting cracks echoed around them. There was a roar of ice and snow rushing into the sea. The smaller iceberg split and calved, uh, I looked up this word, it's something very specific to the splitting of icebergs, as far as I'm aware. I don't think it's overly important to know what exactly it means. Uh, revealing massive hollow spaces inside. As the chunks of ice drifted apart at Tagaka's command, the prows of Fifth Nation warships began to poke out, like the beaks of monstrous birds hatching from their eggshells. Now, Fifth Nation is capitalized, both Fifth and Nation, which gives the idea that it's probably the name of an organization realistically this is probably the pirate organization here and the fact that it's called fifth nation gives the idea that okay they want to be a nation of nations uh they're pirates that that sort of makes sense they want to be free from everything and tagaka will mention that in dialogue a little later on about the whole idea of freedom so the sense for wanting to make something different than the other four nations so that's interesting uh, Yun lost his bal balance at the sight and fell to the ground on his back. Tagaka quickly blanketed him in ice, taking care to cover his stone-gloved hand. What is this? He yelled up at her. She wiped his blood off her sword with the crook of her elbow and resheathed it. Uh, a backup plan. Uh, a head start on her way to Yokoya. Uh, a chance to show off. I've been pretending to be a weak bender for so long, I couldn't resist being a little overdramatic. Waterbenders aboard the ships were already stilling the waves ca caused by the ice avalanches and driving their vessels forward. Other crew members scrambled among the mass like insects uh, unfurling sails. They were pointed westward towards home uh, where they would drive into fresh territories of the Earth Kingdom like a knife into an unprotected belly. Uh, Stop the ships, Yun screamed into the sky, not me, the ships. That was all he could get out before Tagaka covered his head completely in ice. Kyoshi didn't know whom he was talking to at first. Um, uh, th thought that in his desperation he was pleading with a spirit, but a low rush of air reminded her that someone was still free. Kelsang pulled up on his glider and beelined towards the flagship. Not today, monk, Tagaka sh said. She lashed out with her arms and a spray of icicles no bigger than sewing needles shot towards Kelsang. It was a fiendishly brilliant attack. The airbender could have easily dodged larger missiles, but Tagaka's pro projectiles were an enveloping storm. The delicate wings on his glider disintegrated and he plunged towards the sea. There was no time to panic for Kelsang. Uh, Tagaka levitated the chunk of ice Yoon was buried in, threw it over the side of the iceberg towards her camp and leapt down after him. Kyoshi grit her teeth and pushed on the ice as hard as she could. Her shoulders strained against her robes, both threatening to tear. The ice gripped, gripping her legs cracked and gave way, but not before shredding the parts of her skin not covered by her skirts. She lifted herself free and stumbled after Tagaka. Uh, she was lucky Yoon's prison had carved out a smooth path. Without it, she would have undoubtedly bashed her skull in, tumbling over the rough 
protrusions of ice. Kyoshi managed to slide down to the pirate camp, her wounds leaving a bloody trail on the slope behind her. So, getting across the idea that the book has no problem with mentioning characters being bleeding, getting cut by swords, all that sort of stuff. So, I think a lot of fears of this being a young adult book and it maybe feeling a little young are imme have immediately gone away with a lot of this, in that the writing style immediately seems very descriptive uh, in terms of getting across like what's going on in bending battles and characters doing specific motions and then especially here that they're willing to actually have characters get injured and you know have characters like win fights very uh, clearly in, in cases like this so very positive so far. Tagaka's men were busy loading their camp and themselves into longboats an elegant cutter one of the water tribe heirlooms she'd mentioned uh, w waited for them off the coast of, of the iceberg. Only a few of the other pirates noticed Kyoshi. They, start, they started to pick up their weapons, uh, but Togaka waved them off. Uh, packing up was more of a priority than dealing with her. Give him back, Kyoshi gasped. Togaka put a boot on the ice encasing Yun and leaned on her knee. The Colossus speaks, she said, smiling. So, Kyoshi is very tall, and other people note that about her. That's interesting that even younger here it's still noted that she is exceptionally tall, hence why she's called a colossus here. Give him back now. She, she meant to sound angry and desperate, but instead she came across as pitiful and hopeless as she felt inside. She wasn't sure if Yuen could breathe in there. Eh? Tagaka said, I saw what I needed to see in the boy's eyes. He's worth more as a hostage than an avatar, trust me. Uh, she shoved Yun off to the side with her foot, and the bile surged in Kyoshi's throat at the disrespectful gesture. So, that's interesting. Uh, Tagaka, who's obviously been revealed here to be a very powerful waterbender, doesn't really rate Yun all that much in that, like, oh, he's not going to be a great avatar, but he will be a good hostage. But here, she, she says, but you, on the other hand, Tagaka said, you're a puzzle. Uh, I know you're not a fighter right now, that much is obvious, but I like your potential. I can't decide whether I should kill you now to be safe or take you with me. She took a step close, closer. Kyoshi, was it? How would you like a taste of true freedom? To go where you want and take what you're owed. Trust me, it's a better life than whatever dirt scratch existence you have on land. Kyoshi knew her answer. It was the same one she would have given as a starving seven-year-old child. I would never become a Dao Fei, Kyoshi said, trying as hard as possible to turn the word into a curse. Pretending to be a leader and an important person when you're nothing but a murderous slaver. You're the lowest form of life I know. So there's the first, I think, real sense of like, okay, that's, that's sort of the Kyoshi we know. Just like, she's not in a very good position in terms of fighting off um, this character here, Togek, Togaka. But she just suddenly turns it on like this is the, that sense of justice she won't like give Tagaka anything she's a pirate I want nothing to do with that um and she just sees her for what she is in her case that is a murderous slaver who's just a pirate in her eyes so that's that sort of Kyoshi sense of justice coming out even this early on so definitely the best character stuff I think in the the excerpt that we have here um Tagaka frowned and drew her sword the metal hissed against the scabbard uh, she wanted Kyoshi to feel cold death sliding between her ribs instead of being snuffed out quickly by water. Kyoshi stood her ground. Give me the avatar, she repeated, or I'll put you down like the beast you are. Tagaka spread her arms wide, telling her to look around them at the field of ice they were standing on. With what, little girl from the Earth Kingdom, she asked, with what? It was a good question, one that Kyoshi knew she couldn't have answered herself, but she was suddenly uh, gripped with the overwhelming sensation that right now, in her de time of desperate need, her voice wouldn't be alone. So the first hints of, I suppose, Avatar you know, stuff here, Avatar State, which I believe we effectively get an Avatar State action here, but we'll, we'll go through it. Um, her hands felt guided. She didn't fully understand, nor was she completely in control, but she trusted. So that to me immediately is like, she didn't feel completely in control, but she trusted is, you know, what's within her, Raba, you know, the previous avatar is guiding her actions here, given that she specifically stated to not be a powerful earthbender at this point in time. Kyoshi braced her stomach, filled her lungs, and slammed her feet into the uh, crowding bridge stance. 
Echoes of power rippled from her movement, hundredfold iterations of herself stamping on the ice. She was somehow both leading and being led by an army of benders. So I think this has to be Avatar State stuff. They don't specifically mention like her eyes glowing up or anything like that, but I suppose from Kyoshi's perspective, does she does, does the Avatar themselves know that their eyes glow up glow when they do this? There is a sense that like she is kind of borderline like doing this without fully going into the Avatar state. It's it's weird in that it like the level of ability that she uses here kinda has to be an Avatar State one, but do they explain it well enough for it to be Avatar State? Either way, um, a column of grey stone seafloor exploded up from the surface of the ocean. It caught the hull of Tagaka's cutter and listed the ship to the side, tearing wooden planks off the frame as easily as a paper off a kite. A wave of displaced water swept over the iceberg, knocking pirates off their feet and smashing crates to splinters. Out of self-preservation, Tagaka reflect reflexively raised a waist-high wall of ice, damming and diverting the surge, but the barrier protected Kyoshi as well, giving her time to attack again. She leapt straight into the air and landed with her fists on the ice. Uh, farther out, the sea boiled. Screams came from the lead warships as more crags of ba basalt rose in their path. The, the bowsprits of the vessels that couldn't turn in time snacked, snapped like twigs. The groan of timber uh, shattering against rock filled the air, as, hide as hideous as a chorus of wounded animals. Kyoshi dropped to her knees, panting and heaving. She would meant to keep going, to bring the earth close enough to defend herself, but the effort had immediately sapped her to the point where she could barely raise her head. So... She does something pretty crazy here. So in the middle of like an iceberg field, she uses earth bending to raise basically the 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 earth of the seafloor above the level of the ocean and she does multiple pillars of this as well at a good distance to stop like escaping ships as well. So that's avatar level stuff. Like I can't see Toph for instance just being able to just, you know, be there in the middle of an iceberg and just be like boom here's like five pillars of uh you know seafloor stone up off the seafloor above the ocean like she could do like maybe an aspect of this but th this seems like a very very powerful ability to the point where i think it kind of has to be avatar state stuff um which would which would be fitting here with the idea of you and who everyone knows is the thinks is the avatar at this point in time couldn't do anything but Kyoshi, who no one gives any credit to, does this crazy thing. So, um, next up, uh, Tagaka turned around, her face so controlled over the past two days, spasmed in every direction. What in the name of the spirit, she whispered as she flipped her jan uh, over for a downward stab. The speed at which Tagaka moved to kill her made it clear that she'd be fine living without an answer. Kyoshi, stay low. Kyoshi instinctively obeyed Rangi's voice and flattened herself out. She heard and felt the scorch of a fire blast travel over her, knocking Tagaka away. Uh, with a mighty roar, Peng Peng strafed the iceberg. Rangi and Heiran blasting, f uh, blasting flame from the bison's left and right, scattering the pirates as they attempted to regroup. Jan Zhu handled Peng Peng's reins with the skill of an air nomad, spinning her around for perfectly aimed tail shots uh, of wind that drove away clouds of arrows and uh, thrown spears. Kyoshi had no idea how they'd escaped the ice, but if any three people had the power and resourcefulness to pull it off, it was them. So obviously we saw these earlier on in the fight be trapped in the initial start of the fight by the waterbenders who were under the ice. They've now got out. Um, so again, this is the idea. Rangi and Heron are firebenders. Uh, Je Jan Zhu is piloting uh, Peng Peng, who is, uh, what's his name uh, from up here? It begins with a T. Uh, Teng. What's his name again? Uh, he's only in it for like a second. Um, just trying to get the names kind of correct in it. Kelsang. Sorry, it doesn't begin with a T. It's a K. Kelsang. So this is, Peng Peng is te, uh, Kel Sang's uh, bison. So, um, anyway, so what do we have here? Um, the fight wasn't over. Some of Tagaka's fleet had made it past Kyoshi's obstacles. And from the nearby sinking ships, a few waterbenders declined to panic like their fellows. They drove into the water instead, generating high-speed waves that carried them towards Tagaka, her elite guard coming to rescue her. 
Rangi and Heyran jumped down and barraged the pirate queen with flames that she was uh, forced to block with sheets of water. Rangi's face was covered in blood and her mother had only one good arm, but they fought in perfect coordination, leaving Tagaka no gaps to mount an offense. So immediately there's the reveal that uh, Heyran is Rangi's mother. So that's interesting. And then Heyran has some sort of an injury to one of her arms, uh, so she can she only firebend with one. But they have such good coordination together, they're able to face off against Tagaka fairly well. So, we'll handle the waterbenders, Heyran shouted over her shoulder, stop the ships. Uh, Janzu took a look at the stone monoliths that Kyoshi had raised from the seafloor and then at her. In the heat of battle, he chose to pause. He stared hard at Kyoshi, almost as if he were doing sums in his head. Janzu, Heyran screamed. He snapped out of his haze and took Peng Peng back up. They flew towards the nearest formation of stone. Without warning, Janzu let go of the reins and jumped off the bison in midair. Kyoshi thought he'd gone mad. He proved her wrong. She'd never seen Janzu earthbend before, but only heard Yun and the staff describe his personal style as different, unusual. More like a line dance at the new year, Auntie Mui once said, fanning herself with a dreamy smile on her face. Stable below and wild on top. He hadn't been able to earthbend on the iceberg, but now Kyoshi had provided him with all of his element that he needed. As Janzu fell, flat panes of stone peeled off the crag and flew up to meet him. They arranged themselves into a manic architectural construction with broad daylight showing through the triangular gaps, a, a steep ramp that he landed on without losing his momentum. He sprinted uh, towards the escaping ships in a direction he had no room to go, but as he ran, his arms coiled and whipped around him like they had minds of their own. He flicked his fists using minute twists of his waist and countless sheets of uh, rock fastened themselves into a bridge under his feet. Uh, Jan Zhu never broke stride as he uh, travelled on thin air suspended by his on-the-fly earthworks. Fire blasts and water spouts shot up from the benders manning the ships. Jan Zhu nimbly leapt and slid over them. The ones aimed at the stone itself did surprisingly little damage as the structure was composed of chaotic, redundant races. He raced ahead of the lead ship, crossing its path with his bridge, right as Kyoshi thought he'd extended too far that he ran out of stone and thinned his support beyond what it could hold. He leapt to safety, landing on top of a nearby ice flow. Um, the precarious, unnatural assembly began to crumble without Janzu's bending to keep it up. First, the individual piece, uh, pieces began to flake off. Chunks of falling rock bombarded the lead ship from high above, sending the crew members diving for cover as the wooden deck punctured like leather before an awl. But their suffering had only begun. The base of the bridge simply let itself go, bringing the entire line of stone down across the prow. The ship's aft was uh, uh, levered out of the water line, expo line, exposing the rudder and barnacled keel. The rest of the squadron didn't have time to run. One follower angled away from the disaster. It managed to avoid crashing its hull, but the change of direction caused the vessel to tilt sharply to the side. The tip of its rigging caught on the wreckage, and then the ship was beheaded of its masts and sails. The wooden pillars snapped off, a uh, snapped off a child's toy breaking at its weakest points. The last remaining warship bringing up the rear might have made it out, assuming some dazzling feat of heroic seamanship. Instead, it wisely decided to drop anchor and call it quits. If Tagaka's power was in her fleet, then the Avatar's companions had destroyed it. Now they just had to live long enough to claim their victory. You did good, kid, said a man with a husky voice and an accent like Master Amox. Uh, they'll be telling stories about this for a long time. Kyoshi spun around, afraid a pirate had gotten the drop on her, but there was no one there. The motion made her dizzy, too dizzy. She sank to her knees, a drawn out, lengthy process, and slumped onto the ice. So that's the excerpt that we have here. The rest of this is just, uh, you know, where to pre-order, date it's coming out. So uh, yeah, we're just over uh, two months away from release now. And I think this is a very good excerpt. I think it takes a little bit of reading. Like I gave you guys a lot of the context for this because I read it a few times before recording the video in that like, um, in that sense, they maybe could have uh, given us a more introductory excerpt from the book, but I think you can, over over the course of reading this, get a sense for like, okay, Kyoshi, uh, along the way here, f ends up having some sort of a team around her, 
um, with some firebenders, uh, some earthbenders. Uh, there's mention of like the two earthbenders coming from some place where there's like a staff, uh, which is interesting. So that may be where she maybe trains in earthbending. Um, there, there's 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 definitely some interesting stuff going on. Obviously, the big question is like, how does Kyoshi go from like seemingly starving as a seven year old, which is mentioned here, to now? not being recognized as the avatar seemingly not making it obvious to anyone that she's the avatar and actually having someone that she's with act as the avatar and you know she's involved in pi with these pirates and whatever they're doing they're called like the fifth nation or something like that and um, it seems like there's a full-on plot going on here which definitely has me interested i like the writing style there's a lot of depth here uh, in terms of the description of the action which I do like. It's very clear about what's going on with the bending, the the state of the battle, and so on. And I definitely hope that that level of description is going to come across in the more like world building moments and the the character moments when there's not action going on as well. I assume it will, but I think this immediately completely takes out the idea that oh, it's a young adult novel. There's going to be no depth in the writing. This makes it pretty clear that they're. There is some depth here, but we'll obviously have to wait and see what the character moments are like. But for the most part, it seems uh, pretty good, even though it is just an action scene. But there's like a hint at some stuff there. Um, like with um, the the Kyoshi and um, the, the Tagaka and Kyoshi sort of talk and conversation just before she does her crazy bending. Um, and, you know, <laughs> just... Uh, here pretending to be a leader and important person you're when you're nothing but a murderous slaver you're the lowest form of life i know given that she other, otherwise comes across as somewhat lacking in confidence here being that you know steadfast in like what she believes in is, is very very telling for the character so i definitely like that and immediately just like there's, it's, there's no sense of like it seems like this is just going to be nothing but earthbenders the entire time like already there's like a there's a air nomad here to some firebenders uh the enemy seem to be waterbenders and firebenders as part of this uh fifth nation and um, so lots of interesting stuff here and a tease of some backstory so uh, and again the the book is going to have like over 400 pages you know it's, it's like 450 or something like that at this point um and i assume what we have here is maybe like three four maybe five pages at most or something like that I, i'm not really sure about the, that estimate but something along those lines there's a lot more to come in this book than just this and this seemed like a pretty big action set piece in a way uh, on top of the iceberg with lots of stuff going on and again even just the stuff like that they show that kiyoshi is bleeding from the results of this uh yun gets trapped in ice and like there's fear that he might not be able to breathe uh, seemingly um, Rangi's mother has some sort of an injury to one of her arms and she can't use it there's there's some stuff going on here and I, I definitely like what's uh, what's happening here so I think it's, it's it's a good preview definitely and it makes me excited for the book uh, I will be trying to get a review copy as soon as it's available to request and uh, get reviews out and content about this book out as soon as possible and uh, my plan is to do a lot of coverage on this book obviously the more content that's in the book the more in-depth it is the more content that i'll do but you can be assured that my channel will feature lots and lots of videos covering the rise of kiyoshi once it comes out on uh, july 16th i believe is the release date which it confirms once again then the bottom here so yeah Rise of Kyoshi will be released July 16th, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that. So, um, yeah, in, in a way, that's for the most part all they needed to do in terms of uh, hyping up this book is just release some information about what's going on. Um, I'd perhaps maybe like another like news article like this to maybe cover something from a little earlier in the book. Um, obviously, I think much closer to release, we'll probably get just like Google, Google preview pages of like the first couple of pages of the book and that will probably help things out as well just to see where we start do we start with her at this sort of teenage age or do we are we starting with her as a seven-year-old in seemingly a very very bad position but uh yeah th that's my thoughts on uh this excerpt from the, the rise of kiyoshi in the comments let me know what your thoughts are but uh, that's been the video thanks for watching and bye